Guys are so spontaneous. Oh, wow. Well, wow. I forgot to turn the music off, didn't I? So we'll do that again. <laughs> Matthew Highton. Hello. <laughs> Hello. That was kind of like a masterclass in storytelling and uh, essentially memory. Um, yeah, no. I Like, just a little secret here. I actually I messed up a massive chunk, like, in my orders. I was like, oh, God, I've got to get that in. I've got to get that in. I've got to get that in. But, yeah, generally, as long as I, I've got the pieces, it works. This morning, there's a lutz on the end of my bed and there's a bald cat. Right? I don't own a cat, by the way. I've never seen this cat before in my life. I had a strong inkling I shaved that cat. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of uh, I made my way downstairs as well, and like there's a sea of kebab wrappers and bottles and things like, oh, Matthew, you had a party about 2 a.m. This is not ideal. This is not good. And I got down into the lounge, and there's this one remnant of the party left on the sofa. If I should wake him up, decorum dictates it. I don't know the man. And I rolled him over, and it was Tom Selleck. <laughs> No, I didn't expect it either, to be honest. <laughs> like, the narrative, because I, I love films, I really love films, I just wanted to get, like, loads of different things. And so, I, my favourite thing is when you're telling it and people get into this sort of, ah, uh, what's he doing? And then you say something and they click. And because people are so, my theory was, people are so used to film narratives, then they'll be able to, their attention will be able to understand, like, what's going on. And because a lot of, someone, I can't remember, a few people were telling me, like, Oh, you need, you know, people aren't going to get this, they're not going to get it. I thought they will, because, you know, they watch things like Inception, it does well. <laughs> Basically, massive head trauma equals time displacement for me. It's weird, right? And this time I went to the future. You know, going to the future, on a funky phone. Didn't have a soundtrack, cause, uh, but if it did, it'd probably be wicked. And anyway, I woke up at the end of time this time, and the, like, mankind was gone and dystopia was burning in the background. It was proper bleak, proper bleak. <laughs> Just on the edge of a cliff, there was one being left in existence, just sat there. It was God, right? I say God, it was actually an iPhone application that got out of hand because of a good 3D signal and strong Wi Fi. We gained all knowledge and become omnipotent, hence God. Genuinely, you kind of have to rely on your audience in a bit of a way. And also, yeah. you ask them to fire at you, you ask them yeah, to say, heckle. heckle. Heckle away. I love it though, this is, this is a great thing because, like, I like that spontaneity because otherwise I'm just doing the same thing every day and I want everyone to have a, a different show so if they come back though they know the story it's like they can make it I think it's like one of those things that'd be good on a rewatch because you know it and you're like you know what afterwards I'm gonna I'm gonna fire that back because I had a girl in today and she saw it a few days ago and she brought friends back today so it's that good you know I do encourage heckling in this so if, if you don't hands up it's so bright if you've got some just shout at me any point you want to join in just shout in I encourage it if you feel like you want to discourage me or try and trip me up go for it you know I encourage like I say just oh we've got more coming in what a shame hey Blue waffles? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna Google this. Uh, basically, I get people to tell me about Googles, and yeah, I've had some such weird ones. Oh, what did you whisper? I knew you had something! <laughs> yeah, what's the weirdest thing they've Googled? And someone went, just without pause, they went, Marilyn Monroe necrophilia. It's like, what the fuck? So it's brilliant, it's absolutely brilliant. So, like, I was feeling the covers back slowly, bit at a time. Straight away, not good. Hairy shoulders. <laughs> Rolled it over and it was Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be honest, I didn't expect it either, really. Basically, I, I thought, I can't just make up characters all the time. I want people to see how absurd the idea is, um, but be able to relate to it because they, they recognise the person. There is a moment where you're questioning what's going on. Yeah, yeah. And going, well, I mean, it's entirely plausible that Tom Selleck was <laughs> yeah, yeah. in his house. <laughs> why not? He's, why would he lie to us? <laughs> He was. <laughs> people, right? You're going to love this. I came up with this brilliant thing to spice up your work day. Right? Basically, what you do, what you want to do is stay late every night, every night. Some nights you have to hide in the disabled toilet so they don't get suspicious, but it's worth it, right? Every night, stay late, and when everyone's gone from the office, just go around the rent to kill traps. It'll take you about three weeks. Every day, go around checking them. So eventually, pay dirt, you'll find a mouse, right? A rat will do, a rat will do. Okay, and what you do, using the toy bicycle you bought three weeks earlier, right? Yeah? You just find a wall near the door, and you put the mouse down, and you put the bicycle down, and you make it look like an accident. <laughs> Brilliant, and you get the fallout of that. Who's going to the toy shop later? <laughs> <laughs>